presentation is going to be show and tell, so you can get a visualization of the impact to Dorian storm surge on the island. And I'll also take you through where we are today. Um, so the beginning before the storm. Once the storm had passed, um, we, we were left with mounds and mounds of debris once person start to clear. So the passing of Hurricane Dor Dorian made us realize that the power of technology such as GIS, or stands for Geographical Information System, is very, very important. Especially because this tool has the capability of projecting, analyzing, and providing visualization so that we can understand potential impacts on matters such as buildings, land, our environment, as a whole, <coughs> excuse me, as a whole. Some of you here today saw the demonstration of our GIS tool in-house prior to Hurricane Dorian impact on the island of Grand Bahama. Unfortunately, the visual prediction of this powerful tool became a reality. Today, where are we? City Maintenance and Management Department of the Grand Bahama Port Authority Limited continues to diligently work with its service providers and licensees on a daily basis to bring the city back to a sense of normalcy. In this vein, I present to you an update of the ongoing cleanup and restoration throughout the city. The following GBPA subdivisions have received the first round of debris removal. And they include subdivisions such as Hawksville, Regency Park 1 and 2, Coral Gardens, East Coral, some of you know it as uh, Pioneer's Loop, Central, the area we're in today, Coral Reef 1, 2, and 3, Coral Gardens, Seahorse Village, Windsor Park, the Ridge on Coral Road, Sunset on West Pioneer's Way, West Section, some of you know as Back of Town. And so the areas highlighted in yellow were those areas that I mentioned. GBPA currently with its service providers, Sanitation Services, Sharon Pinder, AJ Trucking, are currently working in areas as of Friday of last week. East Section 1 through 5, Mayfield Park, Ponciana Garden, Caverell Beach, and Civic Industrial Area will be in a few weeks to come. And so our initial strategy, different from Matthew in 2016, was to spend more time on the main road, so we can have to be exact, which would allow persons to remove debris. So once we go into those areas, we spend less time. In Matthew, we visited some areas five times. With Darwin, we believe we may do, we may get to three rounds in some areas. As Lou mentioned earlier, these are some of the detailed information we received thus far. Sanitation trucks have done about 239 loads and Sharan, approximately 270 loads, uh, not including, including the Lukai area, this is specifically for the GBPA area. As it relates to private subdivisions, we want the developers to know that the Grand Bahama Port Authority Limited will do its part to assist where necessary and as best as possible. And those private subdivisions are as follows. Freeport Ridge on GB Highway, Britannia Estates, Royal Bahamia Estates, Malibu Reef, Bahama Terrace, Imperial Park 1 and 2. And in, Lukaya, in the Lukaya area, Richmond Park, Sherwood Forest, Fortune Bay, one and two. And I, I missed out Hudson Estate. For more information, we ask in persons to please call our 24-hour helpline, 352-2000, if they have any questions or any concerns regarding our schedule. 
and regarding any other matters that they deem necessary that they need to talk to us about. And again, thank you. So this next one would be basically a show and tell uh, into our GIS system and to give you a visualization of the surge impact on the island. Okay, okay take this off, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone, again. Um, as of 2019, the GBPE Building and Development Services <coughs> is using modern day technology to in conduct its inspections, building inspections post hurricane. So, what we did is we built on the enterprise GIS as a account. This is from field to finish. So, our inspectors will go out in the field, conduct their building assessments, and the information is fed straight back to the office. So, field to finish, elimination of paper waste system. All right, so far, as of yesterday, 5 p.m., we have mm. done 434 building inspections within the Freeport Lukai area. Um, this area right here is Dover Sound, Doobie, whatever it is. And the left, this is Hutchison Estate. Um, this is Sunset, the, the Civic Industrial Area, as well as the Airport Zone. Those areas are being inspected and is continued to be inspected. And so just to give you a little more detail on what I'm speaking about. And so this represents detailed inspection. So for example, you would notice red, yellow, and green here in the map. So if you look at the red, and every dot that you see red, these are properties, buildings that we assess in, in, on a detailed aspect. The red represents buildings that are unsafe. And I'm going to break down these numbers for you. So for example, out of the 434 buildings that have been detailed assessed, 38 of those buildings has between 90 and 100% damage. And those damage could be structural or electrical, okay? Uh, 139 of those buildings have between 30 and 60% damage, okay? And we can go through all of this, but this gives us a bird's eye view in a very real time what's happening. So in the office, uh, we have the dashboard set up. As the inspectors pick it up, it gets feed right back to the office. And so moving forward, uh, once we're able to fully use this after post-hurricane, this hurricane was the test for this particular software that we developed, that Ahmed developed for us, um, for us to be able to get an idea, feel as to how easy it is to use in the office. And so this was very uh, important for us to be able to use it, pick up the data, so that real time, uh, which helps us with GB Power as we move forward to really get things done quickly. And so moving forward, uh, our intention is to work with GB Power in a, in a different way so that uh, the re-energization re could be seamless and quick for the residents. Next slide. The GBPA, in collaboration with Global Medic, an uh, NGO, is in the process of flying drones and collecting imagery across the island. Um, why, you ask? Two reasons. One, to document what happened in 2019. This is actually the worst hurricane hit the island, so to document what happened, to know what could happen. Two, damage assessments, especially from a roofing perspective. So this is the extent that was done so far. This is Derby, Emerald Bay, Sentinel Bay, Colony Bay, Lincoln Green. Not shown on this, McLeanstown, Freeport, Pelican Bay, and we want to go westward. We also go to the airport as well too, because that's the high impact areas, especially the civic industrial area. So we're going to show you what the before and after looks like for McLeanstown. So this is McLeanstown pre-Dorian, pre-H5. This is post-Hurricane. As you can see, it just speaks for itself. If you're not physically there, you're virtually there right now. So if I may, um, we talked about one of the critical things when you're listening to hurricane impact on an island. The number one thing you must always pay attention to is the surge. And that was one thing that we were asking when we did the pre-presentation um, uh, to definitively tell us what the surge was going to be and we can tell you who is going to be impacted. And so um, based on our preliminary assessment, 
Um, I think there's another slide that shows our comparison to what CNN has, and it was spot on. And so what we see here is the North Coast. Um, if you could, if, I don't know if you can see this. This is the airport right here. Uh, this area is basically Baleo, Yeomanwood, uh, Green and Glade. And so from North Coast to the furthest point is six miles that water came in. Okay. Uh, this is Queen's Cove right here. You could see it was inundated. Okay. Uh, and if we look to the airport, you come and you see downtown. Basically a central area. It was all water impacted. The areas not highlighted are basically areas that were higher than 15 feet. So these are some of the ridges in the island that the water went around, couldn't go over. Because in this area, you had a 15 foot surge that came in. And as it came in, the water got less and less. And we know in this building, you had four feet, okay? Now, you may strangely ask why that cut off. Everything beyond that point, north coast met south coast, met, which meant, the seawater on the north coast met the seawater on the south coast. In other words, it was all underwater. That's why we didn't show it. It didn't even make sense. So this is basically Lukayan, Lukayan waterway right at the bridge, right there. The bridge is here. And everything over was underwater. And in fact, the surge was a lot higher. We believe that was between 21 and 20, 23 feet surge on the island. Okay? And so again, the ridges are points higher than where the surge was. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just after the hurricane, what we noticed from the residents is that a lot of residents are unsure of where they live. Um, they're unsure of the subdivision that they live in. They're unsure of the house number that they're actually residing in. So to bridge that gap of help coming in, NGOs coming in and asking for addresses, uh, this was developed. Free, no use in a password. You can type it in your in your internet connected device, phones or laptop. Bit.ly forward slash capital GBP underscore address. It contains all the addresses, subdivisions, blocks, roads, or freeport Lucaya area. So this is a tool to bridge the gap between residents and NGOs from our address standpoint. Thank you. Um,